Hi Bobcats. In this video we're going to take a look at our last, um, the last piece, our last objective in the kinetics chapter, which is catalysis. The um, role of a catalyst is to speed up a chemical reaction and so we'll see on a mechanistic level how that actually works. Our two objectives are to discuss how catalysts speed up chemical reactions and to provide examples of both homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis. The way that a catalyst speeds up a chemical reaction is by providing an alternate mechanism which has a lower activation energy. In this example, the uncatalyzed reaction is a single step with a large activation energy. And then once you add a catalyst, the reaction goes by a two-step mechanism, which has a greatly reduced activation energy. Lower activation energy means faster reaction. Notice that the catalyst does not affect the delta H of the reaction. The reactants and the products are still um, at the same uh, energy levels as they were in the uncatalyzed reaction, so the overall delta H remains the same. When we look at a mechanism, we can identify the catalyst because it's something that gets added to the reaction, so it will first appear as a reactant, but then it will it, after it gets consumed in that step, it'll be regenerated in a later step. So it'll appear on the product side somewhere later. Since it appears on both the reactant side and the product side in different steps of this um, reaction, of this mechanism, it'll cancel out and will not appear in the overall reaction. So let's take a look at this um, mechanism for um, the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide and see if we can figure out what chemical is acting as a catalyst and what chemical is acting as an intermediate. So the catalyst is something that gets added but doesn't appear in our overall reaction. So that's looking like it's HBr. And you'll notice the HBr gets regenerated down here. So the HBr is in the role of a catalyst. Now, an intermediate is something that gets made in one step and then consumed in a later step. So let's see if we can identify the intermediate. It looks like bromine gets made in one step and then it gets consumed in a later step. And so bromine acts as an intermediate in this mechanism. To help illustrate uh, what a, a heterogeneous catalyst can do, uh, this is a, a description of how an alkene, which is an organic chemical that has a carbon-carbon double bond, can be hydrogenated. And when that happens, a hydrogen molecule is added across the double bond. And so we end up with all single bonds everywhere as those extra hydrogen atoms are added. So if we have to wait for a gas phase hydrogen atom to collide with a gas phase um, uh, alkene they, and to collide with the right energy and the right orientation, we might be waiting quite a long time. So the, when a metal surface catalyzes this process, the hydrogen molecules, the H2 gas, adsorb to the surface and they, the molecule breaks apart. So we end up with individual hydrogen atoms attached to the surface. These individual hydrogen atoms on that metal surface have a very high mobility. They're whizzing around like they're, they're ice skating around on that metal surface. Then an alkene molecule will attach to the catalyst surface and that double bond breaks and we end up with a single bond between the carbon and the metal surface, which is shown here. Well, sooner or later, one of these highly mobile hydrogen atoms will bump into this carbon metal bond and the hydrogen will um, attach to the carbon. I guess that's 
uh, what's being shown over here in this right hand diagram. Um, and then if we, we have that same thing happen down here in the bottom to the other carbon atom and we create a bond between the carbon and the hydrogen, um, then the molecule, the what used to be the alkene, desorbs from that catalyst surface as an alkane. And this process is much faster due to that high surface mobility of the hydrogen atoms than waiting for the gas phase collisions to, take, to make this reaction take place. All right, let's analyze this mechanism. It says that a catalytic mechanism is proposed for the depletion of ozone by chlorofluorocarbons. And the overall reaction is given first. It says that ozone plus atomic oxygen yields two oxygen molecules. And the first step of the mechanism is that a chlorine atom attacks ozone to make ClO plus oxygen. And then in the second step, an oxygen atom attacks ClO to give us chlorine plus oxygen. So we're asked to analyze which of these statements are true. Um, anytime I'm looking at a Roman numeral question like this, um, I like to analyze each statement individually, statements one through four, before I look down at the uh, answer choices. So that way I'm not having to analyze the same thing more than once. So the first one says that O2 is a reactant. Well, to answer that, we need to look at our overall reaction. And in our overall reaction, O2 is actually a product. So that one is not correct. The next statement says that ClO is an intermediate. Well, ClO is produced in the first step and it's consumed in the second. So that one is true. ClO is an intermediate. Step or answer choice three says that ozone is decomposed to molecular oxygen and atomic oxygen in the overall reaction. Uh, no, that's not true. In the overall reaction, ozone reacts with atomic oxygen to create molecular oxygen. So um, it has the role of um, atomic oxygen incorrect in this statement. And then step number four says that Cl is the catalyst. And yes, Cl first appears as a reactant and then it gets regenerated in the end, making that a catalyst. And so Cl is a catalyst. So it looks like answers two and four are correct, which would be answer D. As we wrap up chapter 14, I want to give just a teeny tiny introduction to chapter 20, which is where we're going next. That may seem like a strange jump to go from 14 to 20, um, especially because chapter 20 is all about nuclear chemistry. But there's a direct connection between these two chapters, and that is that nuclear decay processes take place by first order kinetics. And so we are segueing into chapter uh, chapter 20 to have a concrete example of kinetics calculations uh, with nuclear chemistry. Instead of talking about Ks, we usually talk about half-lives, but remember that there's that relationship that the half-life is equal to the natural log of 2 over K, or we can rearrange that equation to say that K is equal to the natural log of 2 over the half-life. Um, but before we can get to the kinetics part, the first part of the chapter is going to be about uh, balancing nuclear reactions. And so dust off some of that uh, early chapter from Gen Chem 1 material um, in terms of the isotope notation where we have something like 13,6C, which tells us that carbon has six protons and seven neutrons, because we're going to need that notation in order to write and balance the nuclear reactions that are going along um, with these kinetics processes. Um, one thing 
to note as we're moving into chapter 20, writing and balancing nuclear equations is much easier than writing and balancing chemical equations. So there's no need for concern about that. Um, the nuclear, nuclear processes are pretty easy to balance. So our objectives winding up this last section of chapter 14 were to discuss how catalysts speed up chemical reactions. They do that by providing an alternate mechanism that has a lower activation energy. And then to provide examples of both homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis, which we did um, in terms of like enzymes for homogeneous catalysis. And we looked at the catalytic hydrogenation of an alkene for heterogeneous catalysis.